So we're not dealing with um, the mouse. If you have, um, let's say you had three different levels that you want someone to choose from, or you want them to um, select between, you know, play again or quit, something like that, you should be using the keyboard if you can. That way, uh, when we have it in the stand-up arcade game, they can actually use the joystick to make choices between things instead of using the mouse to click on them. So. I'm just going to show you this with uh, three different sprites, maybe um, baseball, basketball, and beach ball. Get rid of the cat. Here's one choice, here's another choice, and here's another choice. We'll call this choice zero, this is choice one, and this choice two. In computers we often start numbering things with zero. So zero, one, two. So um, how do we do this? I think the first thing is we probably just want to deal with the stage and create a variable that is called um, selected. And then I'll store a number either zero, one, or two, telling us which one is selected. So I'll put all the scripts under stage because it kind of makes sense for what I'm doing. And um, I think what I'll do is anytime this thing starts, it can, uh, well, let's, let's do this. We will have to do some things to, to reset everything. In fact, we know that anytime we have a variable, we'd like to just reset it at the beginning. So let's do that. And then I'd say maybe anytime the right arrow is pressed, I'd like to change this selected variable uh, by one. Okay. Now the question is, how do I know which one is selected? Well, if I hit the right arrow, it is saying one, two, three. And I can add this for the left arrow. Anytime I press the left arrow, it should uh, change selected by minus one. So hitting the left arrow, hitting the right arrow. You can see the potential problem here. It's going beyond zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two. We can fix that later. So anytime I hit the flag, it goes back to zero. Things are working okay right now. Now, the question is, how do we know which one is selected? So I think the way to do that is for each one of these sprites, we would say to watch, uh, you know, this when the flag is clicked forever, seems pretty common by now, just watch and see if uh, selected is equal to zero in this case, which, oh, wait, zero, one, two. I'm on the, I'm on the baseball, that's number two. So make sure uh, if we're on number two, selected as number two, then this one should be highlighted somehow or something like that. So how can we do that? Um, let's say, well, we know that there's gonna be an if statement. So if that variable is equal to two, zero, one, two, then we should do something about the appearance of this thing. So let's let's do this and just uh, change its color effect or set the color effect to zero to forty. I don't know what that does, but select the same change the color to forty. And we could say otherwise we want to clear whatever that effect is. So to do that otherwise thing, we need if then else uh, if if else in here. So here we go, Ooh. forever, if selected is equal to two, set the color to something different, otherwise clear whatever we just did. Let's see if that works. One, two, eh, doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's try something else. Pixelate. Nah, all right. Oh, it's not running. Okay, so now it's running. <laughs> One, two, there we go, so it gets pixelated. Now let's go back to color, see what that did. One, zero, one, two. Okay, so it shows green. It's not really a huge difference, so it's not, maybe it's not ideal. What we could do is change the ghosting so that it's, uh, running again. Okay, so now it's running again. Uh, if I get to two, it looks like it fades out a little, bit, a little bit, and I can make that even higher, maybe like 80. 
So now it really fades out. But I don't think we really want to fade out the one that's selected. We'd like to fade out the ones that are not selected. So there's a really easy way to, to fix our logic here, which is to just use operators and there's a not here. So to reverse the behavior of this, I'd say if selected is not equal to 2, then make this current one gray. So now it's 1 is selected, so our number 2 is grayed. When 0 is selected, number uh, 2 is also grayed. But if we get back to 2, it goes back to normal. So this is perfect. And actually, this is exactly what we want for all three of these sprites. So I'll just drag it over and drag it over. The only difference is the number. So the basketball is number one, so I'll change selected to one here. And here I'll change selected to zero for the beach ball. So let's try it out. It's running. There we are. I'm hitting the right arrow and the left arrow, and it switches between them. So a little bit of a problem, if you look at the selected number, it's going beyond the 0, 1, 2, 3, which is a problem. So let's try one more uh, tweak to make this work the way we want. Back here under the stage, this is where we deal with the right and left arrows, so that must be where we have to fix this. I think the way to do this is to make a new variable and call it um, unranged selection. So that just means like that could be any number. Zero, it could be zero, it could be minus 5,000, whatever. It's just like it's a totally unformatted version. What we like though is for selected to stay in the range of zero, one, two. So the way we can do this is um, anytime someone presses the right arrow key, I want to change the unranged selection by one. So I don't care if it's if that makes it a 3 or it makes it a 10, whatever. Then I want to set my selected, which is the one I really care about and the one that these sprites actually check. I'm going to set that to some function here, something that will give me a 0, 1, 2 version of whatever this number is. And this is, uh, this is some math business. This is nothing to do with computers from scratch. This is um, plain and simple math. So here's how it goes. There's something called modulus. You may never have seen this, um, but basically this means when you divide one number by another, what's the remainder? So I will say, uh, take our unranged selection, which could be any number, could be 5,000, 10,000, divide it by three, and in its place, this whole thing becomes whatever the remainder of that is. So let's see how this works. Start over. If I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you can see that the unranged number just keeps going up, but the selected keeps staying in 0, 1, 2. Why does this work? Let's take a look at. Um, ooh, unranged is not getting reset, so we also want to do that. So let's reset that every time we hit the flag. Okay, so we're at 0. If I'm at 1, selected is 1, 2, selected is 2. When I get to 3, what makes uh, 3 modulus 3 a 0? Let me show you. If I take 3 and I divide it by 3, 3 divided by 3, um, this is what it looks like. There's a 1 there, this is 3, and there is no remainder. That's why there's a zero there. Let's uh, try again. When we go to four, we've got a one here as the result of four modulus three. How's that work? Four divided by three means we can do this and this and this. We end up with one as a remainder. That's why this gets here. So basically anytime you divide this by three, um, this whole this whole number that comes back for us is uh, the remainder and that goes into selected so this works perfectly now I just have to basically um, duplicate this and make a left arrow version same thing except we're decreasing the unranged selection 
try it again. Works with negative numbers and everything. There you go.